Before we continue this fact video about toads, would you like to know a bonus fact about frogs? Yeah, go for it. Apparently they're one of the few amphibians capable of taking their own life. Really? Yeah, apparently they commit suicide. Oh, get out. <laughs> get out. <laughs> The pebble toad, which sometimes goes by its much more awesome and hard to pronounce Latin name of this word right here, is an amphibian native to Venezuela that has evolved perhaps one of the most awesome and kick-ass defence mechanisms ever devised by an animal, turning into a ball and piecing the fuck out. So go on, what's the punchline for that bit? No, this isn't a joke, nor is it some of my trademark hyperbole. The pebble toad really does turn into a ball and roll away from danger, as this video demonstrates. <laughs> To be clear, that is a real animal that is really rolling down the side of a mountain and it really does that all of the time. So why does it do this? Well, the pebble toad mostly lives on rough mountainous terrain, which doesn't really offer much in the way of places to hide. Like it could like potentially hide under a rock or maybe try and disguise itself in a tuft of grass. But if it's caught out in the open by a predator, it's pretty much fucked. Unless it somehow harnesses the power of gravity to roll to freedom, which is why it's evolved to do this. We're gonna keep putting clips of this because it's fucking great. I love the idea this frog's like, not today. Do -do 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 -do. By turning itself into a ball and allowing itself to become gravity plaything, the toad can cover a remarkable amount of distance in a short amount of time, giving it a few vital seconds and it comes to a complete stop to hide before the predator can realize what the fuck is going on. So how does the toad actually do this? Well, to assume ball mode, what the toad does is it draws all of its limbs as close to its own body as possible and then pulls its muscles taut, giving it the rough appearance of a small rubbery pebble. Hence the name, Pebble Toad. Do you know what the Pebble Toad reminds me of? The Turbo Spider. Are you familiar with the Turbo Spider? I've never heard of the Turbo Spider. You've never heard spider. of the Turbo Spider. If you're scared of spiders, I'd probably recommend skipping like 40 seconds ahead because this video is going to freak you the fuck out. Basically, there's a species of spider that lives like in a desert somewhere and similar to the pebble toad, what it does is it draws all of its legs close to its body and like, like looks like a little wheel and then lets the wind carry it along sand dunes so it can travel like 30 miles an hour or something stupid like that. I remember watching that in like a nature documentary thing. That's really cool, but also now I'm never going to a desert. Because I, I know it's a slim chance, but just the odds of like a wheel-shaped spider flying towards my face. <laughs> the way they move just reminds me of wheel skeletons from Dark Souls, if you know what they are. No. Basically, they're exactly what they sound like. They're skeletons that just live inside a giant wheel and just roll everywhere. And they are one of the most annoying enemies to fight in the game, because all they do is just roll. <laughs> Can you imagine them with just giant spiders? Don't you wish more animals travelled like that? Wouldn't the world be a better place if all animals travel by just assuming droid decker form and just rolling super fast? I want to see like tigers doing that. I want to see like they look like transformers from Beast Wars. And they turn into a car or some shit and just travel super fast. This is the perfect moment to decide which animal would look funniest turning into a ball. Snake. It just it bites its tail like a robberus, and it turns into the wheel and rolls super fast. I think it's snake, but the thing is, the longer the snake, the more terrifying it becomes. Oh god! It's god. like you imagine like, <laughs> like a just... twelve-foot python, this big giant wheel rolling around the jungle. It either be that, or potentially like a whale, just to see, just to see it rolling along the surface of the water. But it's like whale lord level, like right, next. You, know, you could like fuck it in Pokemon. You could teach whale lord roll out. Mm. That's the best. That's the fucking bit. I want to see that. That's what this is like, isn't it? This is what this attack is. It's like this pebble toad. People say, oh yeah, it's a defensive mechanism. No, no, it's using rollout. Out of interest, does the pebble toad injure itself in any way doing this? Nope, it doesn't get hurt at all by doing this. And there's never been like any real recorded instances of a pebble toad hurting itself by assuming ball form and rolling down a mountain because it's just too small and adorable to cause itself harm by doing that to itself. Meaning it can do it over and over and over again. So let's say if it sees like, oh, the predator's still coming, it can jump back up into the air, assume ball mode and roll down the hill some more to escape it again, because it knows it won't hurt itself by doing it. Mm -hmm. 
Because I love the idea of an animal being so small and adorable that gravity won't hurt it. Let's talk about the barnacle goose. How much do you know about the barnacle goose? Very little. Very little. Okay, so people at home, there is a creature called the barnacle goose. And what the barnacle goose does, it lays all of its eggs on cliffs. Because the idea is if it lays it on the cliff, then like predators can't get to the eggs. The thing is, barnacle geese can't fly for a like, couple of weeks after they're born. However, the parents will stop feeding them after about a week or so and then just wait on the ground. So do you know what these tiny, adorable barnacle goslings have to do to, like, you know, to get food from their parents? Is it an adorable fluffy leap of faith? Yes, they have to do an Assassin's Creed leap of faith off the edge. And a lot of people watching clips of this think, oh no, that's so cruel. Those like, little baby geese are gonna die. It's like, no, they don't. Because they're so small and so fluffy that they actually slow down enough in, air, in the air to not be hurt when they land on the ground. <laughs> So basically, if like one like glorious moment of the year where the barnacle geese are nesting, it just rains tiny adorable birds. <laughs> Isn't that, good? Isn't that a great fact? Isn't that, don't you feel better as a human being learning that that's a thing that exists? Although I should probably point out as well that like foxes have learned that they do this and sometimes wait at the bottom of that. You had to ruin it, didn't you? I did, yeah. You couldn't just let it be happy, No, could I you? couldn't, no. I had, like, factual accuracy trumps all else. I'm sorry, guys. Because of its rather unique defence mechanism, the toad is largely able to forage for food out in the open, safe in the knowledge that once it reaches terminal velocity while rolling down the hill, no predator could hope to keep up with it. Also, because as mentioned earlier, the toad doesn't hurt itself by doing this, it will do it over and over again the very moment it senses any danger whatsoever. Or, in other words, if you ever happen to find yourself in Venezuela and want to go mountain climbing, I highly recommend taking an umbrella with you because it might start randomly raining toads. So people may not realise this, Carl, but you're not actually feeling very well today, are you? I feel awful. I think the best way to sum it up is when I turned up this morning to film these videos. Brad looked at me and went, did you go out drinking yesterday? That's how rough I looked. And I was there like, nah, I'll be fine. Splashing water on my face. So no, we could do this, we could do this. We need to record these videos today. So I apologise for not being my usual energetic self in this video and the last one. I really, really didn't feel very well. Yeah. And I was running out between takes to go to the toilet. I get a lovely view below the camera as well of Carl in his pyjamas with his big fluffy slippers on. Yeah, let's just share that. Do, do you want to get a slipper? My big bare feet slippers. I need them, I'm not feeling very well. Ugh. But you know what? I woke up and powered through and recorded this one hour of footage. What a big penis hero I am, eh? Don't I deserve all the praise for not just like curling up into a ball and crying like that frog? Since we're talking about it anyway, you got a story about being ill. Uh, yes, I've got the, um, the time that I need to have my appendix out. That was quite a funny story. Well, not for me at the time, obviously, but basically when I was like six or seven, I can't remember the exact age, I got appendicitis. The problem was, my parents didn't believe me because I was like, you know, an antisocial child, you know, to put it bluntly. Because I was like, always, I just wanted to play my PlayStation and I didn't want to do anything else. And I remember we were at uh, my mum's office Christmas party and I was curled up in the corner going, uh, mum, I need to go home. And she was like, you're just faking it, Carl. I'm, like, I'm, I'm really not, mum, because I used to fake being ill all the time to get out of stuff like that. It's like, mum, I'm really, really not. It really, really hurts. And she's like, no, you're not, Carl. Go sit in the corner and eat some cake. So I sit there and I'm eating this cake going, and she thinks she gets really annoyed at this point. She's gonna feel so bad. So I'm not saying bad for my mum, but it's just like, I did do this a lot. And they're like, oh, and eventually she's just, fine, I'll take you home. She takes me home and puts me in bed and thinks, that's it, that's the end of it, innit? It's like, you just want to go to bed early, so you wanna hang out. Like, later that night, I'm like, mum, mum. She's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I bang into the room, and the floor is covered in vomit. And my younger brother was on the bottom bunk there going, <laughs> Because he can't go to the toilet. <laughs> He's just in He's this... just surrounded by vomit. Because <laughs> I just did it like vomiting like constantly for about 10 minutes. But she can hear that and I'm like, Mum, my brother's a crazy to go to the bathroom. So, oh my God, are you okay? Takes him to the hospital. Yeah, your son's got appendicitis. Um, why didn't you bring him in earlier? He's been in agony for the past... My mum felt <laughs> so bad. And she was like, oh no, I'm so sorry, Carl. I'm so sorry. It's like, oh, it's fine, Mum, it's fine. She's gonna feel awful now as well. It's like, I don't blame you, Mum. I was not saying thing. I, was I, th I think we all know it was your fault. That's <laughs> what you get. <laughs> when I had to be in hospital over Christmas, like, uh, it was awful. But I didn't mind, because obviously I, was, I felt much better and they took out you know, my appendix out. Well, my mum and dad came and said, Oh, Carl, you okay? Okay, is there anything you can get for Christmas? And I went, 
A Sega. <laughs> Of course. Of course I did. I got a Sega. It's like, yeah! So then I got to play uh, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker when I came out. Worth it. <laughs>